Hello everyone, my name is Yu Huang from the Census Group of the Institute of Neuroinformatics at the University of Zurich and ETH Zurich. Today, on behalf of our authors, I'm presenting our paper, DDD20 End-to-End Event Camera Driving Dataset, Fusing Frames and Events with Deep Learning for Improved Steering Prediction. This work is supported by NCCR Robotics, the Neuromorphic Processing Project, EU projects See Better and Visualize. The question we ask in this paper is, can end-to-end -end autonomous driving be improved by combining intensity frames and events together when using an event camera? And we systematically answer this question throughout this paper. For audiences that are not familiar with Davis event camera, here is a brief introduction. A Davis event camera concurrently outputs both DVS events that capture the motion in the scene and standard global shutter active pixel sensor in short APS intensity frames. When there is no change in the scene, there is no DVS event output. Because of the quick response property of the DVS, when the panel is spinning faster, the APS intensity frames show severe motion blur, while the DVS outputs are not affected by the fast motion. The combination of sampled analog gray values from the APS stream and the asynchronous high dynamic range events from the DVS could make the Davis well suited to driving applications. These slides show four examples of how the APS and DVS streams complement each other. The top tier pair shows that while the APS cannot capture the hitchhiker when underexposed, the DVS stream clearly captured a person. For the top right pair, the stopped car is invisible in the DVS frame, but cars in other lanes pop out in the DVS frame because of their motion. The bottom left pair shows that when APS sensor is motion blurred, the quicker response of the DVS provides sharper images. The bottom right pair gives an example when the APS image is overexposed because of the sunlight, while the high dynamic range property of the DVS can still capture most details of the scene. Before I present the DDD20 dataset and our study using the Davis camera, let's first look at the past research in all autonomous driving. Current research of autonomous driving is largely divided into two separate approaches. The first on the left is called modular perception, where the information captured by the sensors are carefully analyzed through scene understanding algorithms, such as segmentation, depth estimation, instance recognition, and so on. Then, these outputs are passed to a tailored controller to produce control signals such as steering angles. The second, a more radical approach is through optimizing a direct mapping between sensor input and control signal using neural network. The attractive property of the end-to-end -end learning is the emulation of different data processing modules into a single neural controller. Pioneered in 1989, the end-to-end -end learning for driving has been developed and advanced over the years. 17 years after the first end-to-end -end driving controller, a robot developed by the Miller et al. can avoid obstacle by directly mapping from raw input images to steering angle. 10 years after this work, Coma.ai and NVIDIA teams utilized this state-of-the-art neural network to control a real car following the similar steps as in the 2006 publication. The use of event camera in autonomous driving started at 2016 when Moist et al. developed a predator-prey robot that directly takes the event camera outputs and predicts the prey's location. In 2017, the introduction of DDD17 provides the first driving dataset that can be used for larger scale autonomous driving research 
using event camera. In the 2018 publication, the authors showed that the use of events gave the best steering prediction by comparing the DVS inputs, APS frame differences, and APS frame input. Using DDD20, we report the first study of fusing APS and DVS using a state-of-art deep neural network. And now let's look at the DDD20 dataset. DDD20 dataset contains 51 hours of parallel APS and DVS recordings where the car was driven for more than 4,000 kilometers from Telluride to Pasadena. The speed of the car ranges from 0 to 130 km per hour. This is our recording setup. The Davis is installed on the windshield for capturing a scene. The OpenXC Ford reference vehicle interface was connected to the passenger compartment OBD2 port and readout control and diagnostic data from the car's CAN bus. In this short video, we can see a live demonstration of the recording setup while it's reading out the control signal online. For our experiment, out of 175 recordings, we selected 15 day recordings and 15 night recordings that covered a range of road types and lightning conditions. We manually pruned the, the ends where the car was pulling onto or off the road. We chose the first 70% of the data as a part of the training data and the last 30% as part of the test data. We chose the 32-layer residual network as the baseline network to study the steering angle prediction. The network has 470k parameters and nearly 400 million connections. The network output layer is a linear layer that has one output for instantaneous steering angle prediction. Each model requires 24 hours training for one NVIDIA K80. In this research, we compare three models that receive only DVS input, only APS input, or a combination of DVS and APS. This slide shows a video demonstration of steering wheel angle prediction. The top left video shows the APS frames, and the top right video shows the cap corresponding DVS frames. The bottom panel shows the steering prediction results from different input modalities. You can see that at most time, where the road is clear to both DVS and APS, the predictions from both modalities perform competitively. Well, in this particular case, we can see that the prediction using DVS, which is a purple line, predicts a straight road instead of a curvy one as predicted with the help of the intensity frame. Throughout the video, the DVS plus APS configuration shown in the red line follows the ground truth very well. We evaluated the prediction accuracy according to both root mean squared error, in short RMSE, and explained variance, which is EVA. In this slide, we show the definition and the EVA results. EVA is defined in this formula, where the value is 1 minus the variance between the ground truth and the prediction over the variance of the ground truth. Clearly, if the prediction perfectly matches with the ground truth, the EVA is 1. And when the predictor outputs 0, aka null prediction, the EVA is zero. And even worse, 
When the prediction is the opposite of the ground truth, the EVA value goes smaller than zero. Hence, for this metric, the closer to one, the better the prediction. EVA is particularly informative when the details of the prediction is not captured with RMSE. For example, when driving straight, the EVA is usually quite low, indicating that the detailed timing of the small steering corrections when driving straight are not very well predicted. Since the RMSE is also small in this case, it means that Prediction poorly reflects the details of steering, but still well predicts small angles. In all scenarios, whether the models are trained with day or night recordings, the combination of DVS and APS is significantly higher than using DVS and APS alone. And APS frame produce better steering prediction results than DVS frames alone. In summary, we provide the largest event-based driving dataset for event for end-to-end -end learning. This work is the first to study fusion of APS and DVS data using a state-of-art convolutional neural network. The results show that DVS plus APS produces the most accurate results in steering prediction and APS frame produce better steering prediction results than DVS frames alone. Future works would include optical flow estimation, pseudo object labeling, unsupervised methods for event data. Thanks for watching this video and please check out our website.